Welcome to Lesson 9b, Piping Networks. In this lesson, we discuss piping networks, such as pipes in series and or pipes in parallel. We'll do some example problems. Let's talk about series first. Suppose you have a pipe system where the diameter of the pipe is changing. These would be long pipes. I'm not drawing it to scale. There could be minor losses in one or more of these pipe sections, such as valves, elbows, etc and there's some volume flow rate through this pipe. We'll call this section A, section B, and section C. Pipes are of diameter DA, DB, and DC. If there are no leaks anywhere, V dot has to be the same in all three sections of pipe. V dot A equal V dot B equal V dot C, where we're assuming incompressible and steady flow. But average speed VA is not equal to average speed VB or average speed VC, since the pipe diameters are not the same. If neither average speeds nor diameters are the same, even though it's the same fluid with the same density and viscosity, this means that Reynolds number also differs between the three pipes, and likewise relative roughness is not the same. Since both Reynolds number and relative roughness are not the same in the sections, Darcy friction factor is different in the three sections as well. So in our energy equation in head form, or workhorse equation, everything's the same as previously, but the HL total term, the total irreversible head loss, is more complicated, namely HL total is summation over index I, Fi, Li over Di, Vi squared over 2G, plus sigma over index J, Kl sub J, Vj squared over 2G, where index I is summed over the three sections in our example, A, B, and C, where these terms are all different for the three sections of pipe. Index J is a sum over all the minor losses. Some sections may have none, some sections may have many more than one, and there's a different KL for each minor loss. And you must use the appropriate average speed for each minor loss. In our simple example, the valve is in section B, so the minor loss for this valve would use V sub B, the average speed in this section of pipe. If there were an elbow in this pipe, we would use VC. One other comment is that we must use the Churchill equation three times. These problems are really no different than what we've already been doing other than the head loss term and having more calculations. Now let's consider pipes in parallel. Suppose we have a system like this with some volume flow rate, which must be the same at the inlet and outlet if there are no leaks. Let's call this branch 1, 2, and 3. There will be in general different volume flow rates through these three branches, V.1, V.2, and V.3. Consider points A and B at these pipe junctions. Which branch, 1, 2, or 3, has the larger head loss? Most people would say 1 because it's the smallest diameter and it has some extra elbows. Let's even put a partially open valve in branch 1. It turns out, however, that all three branches have the same pressure drop. The pressure here is PA, pressure here is PB, and it doesn't matter which pipe branch you're going through, the pressure drop is PA minus PB for all three branches. In terms of head loss, HL total 1 must equal HL total 2 must equal HL total 3, since head loss is just pressure drop over rho G, and we have the same pressure drop. So what happens is that the volume flow rate will adjust itself as necessary so that this condition is met. In our case, the volume flow rate through this large central pipe will be highest. This one will be next, and very little flow will come through here. But the head loss has to be the same through all three branches. By conservation of mass, we also know that V dot is V dot 1 plus V dot 2 plus V dot 3. There's an analogy with electrical circuits with which you may be more familiar. Suppose we have this circuit with current I flowing, and for simplicity let's let all these resistors be the same. The voltage potential at the two junctions is EA and EB, and let's call this branch 1 and branch 2. The current will split between the two branches, I1 and I2, but I1 plus I2 has to equal I, the total current. The analogy is that V dot in a fluid flow is analogous to current. Pressure is analogous to the voltage or the voltage potential, and the major and minor losses are analogous to resistance. I drew only two branches, but you can extend this to three branches and see that these are analogous. And EA minus EB is the same through either branch, since these are fixed voltages. Doesn't matter which branch you go through. That's analogous to the pressure drop here being the same regardless of the branch that you go through. And in this case, 
I2 will be less than I1, and I2 and I1 will adjust themselves accordingly, according to these resistances, analogous to our major and minor losses through each branch. Well, this is a very simple pipe flow, but even then you'd have to calculate three different values of Darcy friction factor, since the Reynolds number in each of these three pipes would be different, as will epsilon over d. So there are more calculations involved, but in principle it's not that difficult. Now consider a more complex pipe network. I'll give you a quick summary first and then we'll look at an example. For each section of pipe we need to write a separate equation for Reynolds number, Darcy friction factor, HL, which we call HL total, the sum of the minor and major losses. In series the volume flow rates are the same, but if we split one pipe into other sections, the volume flow rates have to add up. For pipes with branches, we have to write a separate energy equation from inlet to outlet for each branch. Let's look at this example. Flow comes into branch 1 through a T to branch 2 and branch 3. There are minor losses through the elbows, the valves, and the T, and there are also major losses through these straight sections. Again, this is not to scale. The straight sections are usually quite long, and I drew flanged components here. How do we analyze such a problem? Well, since branch 1 splits into branches 2 and 3, we know that V.1 equals V.2 plus V.3, but in general we can't say that the pressure drop through these two branches is the same because they don't connect, and the pressure here may be different from the pressure here, as is the elevation. So I'll show you a trick to solving these problems. We can still use the head form of the energy equation, but imagine that our water is split into blue color, which goes to branch 3, so all the blue water goes through branch 3, and the other portion of this pipe in branch 1 is red water, and all the red water goes through branch 2. In real life, the flow doesn't really split up this way, but in our thought experiment, let's pretend that there's no mixing, and that all the blue water remains separate from the red water. To use our energy equation, we have to select a control volume. Let's first select a control volume that includes only the blue water, then we can write an energy equation for this control volume like normal. The same volume flow rate that comes into 1 exits through 3. We're used to the energy equation going from 1 to 2, but now it will go from 1 to 3. Other than that, the energy equation is identical to what we had before, including both major and minor losses, and even pumps or turbines if there were such things in this branch. We can also draw a control volume around only the red water, and write another energy equation from 1 to 2. When we're analyzing minor losses, we have to consider the branch flow through this T for the blue fluid, which has a different KL than the red fluid going straight through the T. For the red fluid from 1 to 2, our energy equation in head form is the normal equation, where here there's no pumps or turbines, but all of the other terms remain. And again, HL total has to be the sum of all the major and minor losses that are within the control volume under consideration, which is this one. Note that the volume flow rate is the same for all the red fluid, but the diameters are different, and the average speed through branch 1 and branch 2 will be different. So you have to be careful when you add up all the minor losses and major losses, always using the correct diameter, Reynolds number, and speed. We get exactly the same equation through the other control volume, but I replaced all the subscripts 2 with subscripts 3 on the right-hand side. As we try to solve this, we'll have these two equations, three different Reynolds numbers, three different non-dimensional pipe roughnesses, three different average speeds, three different volume flow rates. And the problem is that we don't know these average speeds or volume flow rates, therefore we don't know the Reynolds numbers, so we can't calculate F1, F2, and F3. These kind of problems can be solved, however. When you write out all the equations, you can get a mathematically well-posed problem where there are the same number of equations and unknowns, which we can solve simultaneously. You can see why we'd want to use software to do this. When I was a student back in the 70s, I had to do this by hand, which involved guessing all three of these, running them through all these equations, and coming up with new guesses, and then repeating that several times until we converged. Basically the same procedure that I showed you for one pipe section, and you could program that into Excel or other software, or use software where the equations can automatically be solved simultaneously. Let's do an example. This was a fun example that we made when writing the textbook. Everybody has had this experience where you're taking a shower and someone flushes the toilet and suddenly the water gets really hot. We tried to make this as realistic as possible 
with minor losses associated with the shower head, the float mechanism in this toilet reservoir, valves, elbows, tees, and we calculate the volume flow rate through the shower head when there's no water flowing through the toilet, in other words, it's just straight to the shower, and the volume flow rate through the shower head when someone flushes the toilet, so part of that water is diverted into the toilet reservoir. I'm not going to go over this in detail. Just point out some things. We consider only the cold water line, since the hot water line is separate, and there's no connection of the hot water to the toilet. The shower gets hotter when someone flushes because part of the cold water is deflected into the toilet. Part A is fairly simple, same as previous problems, and I point out that in edition 4 of the Changgao Sambala textbook, we use the Colebrook equation, which is an older equation to mimic the Moody chart. We now use the Churchill equation, and we used ease to calculate the answers. We get 0.53 liters per second when there's no toilet flushing. For part B, we have to do the analysis of branching pipes, as we said. We draw two different control volumes not shown, and these are all the equations we have. Conservation of mass, head losses in branch 2 and branch 3, average speeds based on volume, flow rate, and diameter. In this case, the pipe diameters are all the same. Reynolds numbers, and again, these are Colebrook equations, but I now prefer to use Churchill. The differences are minor. We end up with 12 equations and 12 unknowns, which we have to solve simultaneously. The final result is that the cold water through the shower is reduced by 21%, from 0.53 to 0.42 liters per second, causing the shower to get very hot, which we show here. Problems like this are tedious, and you have to be careful that you have the same number of equations as unknowns so that you can solve it. But I'll tell you from experience that this is not something you want to do by hand. You definitely want to use software to help you solve all these equations. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.